Today's video at Pradhaps Anesthesia is about laryngospasm. This video covers the definition, causes, and clinical features of laryngospasm. Additionally, the video provides tips on how to manage laryngospasm. So, let's jump right into the video. Laryngospasm Laryngospasm is nothing but a sudden closure of vocal cords due to some irritation or stimulation of the larynx. Coming to causes Laryngospasm mostly occurs during anesthesia induction or due to irritants, infections, and while intubating the patient and allergic reactions. Clinical features During laryngospasm, the vocal cords suddenly close, leading to a choking sensation and difficulty in breathing. It may result in strider meaning high-pitched breathing sounds, chest retraction, and cyanosis, bluish discoloration of skin. Patients may appear anxious, distressed, and struggle to get air. Complications the first main complication is hypoxia. Hypoxia is a common complication due to reduced oxygen intake during airway obstruction or laryngospasm. Limited airflow leads to decreased oxygen exchange, lower oxygen saturation in the blood, and compromised organ function. Bradycardia and cardiac arrest can occur due to vagal stimulation. Reflex responses to hypoxia, medication effects, and the strain of oxygen deficiency on the heart. Aspiration, risk of inhaling stomach contents, causing pneumonia. Airway trauma. Airway trauma can occur due to forceful interventions, inadequate techniques, friction, and pressure during airway management. Residual Neuromuscular Blockade Residual Neuromuscular Blockade refers to prolonged muscle relaxation caused by muscle relaxant medications. This can lead to difficulty in breathing and impaired muscle function. Coming to Management of Laryngospasm If you find these clinical features in a patient, first, stop the procedure. If a laryngospasm occurs during a medical procedure, Halt it immediately. Start giving oxygen. Administer 100% oxygen through a mask with a closed expiratory valve to maintain oxygenation. Suction and clear airways. Use suction to clear airway secretions if the patient is adequately oxygenated. If not, don't use suction on those patients. Because while suctioning, you're not only suctioning the oral secretions, also you're suctioning the oxygen. This may worsen the condition. Positive pressure ventilation. Attempt manual ventilation with continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, to open the airway. Larsen's point pressure. Applying inward pressure at Larsen's point along with a jaw thrust helps break a laryngospasm by stimulating the vagus nerve. This interruption can relax the vocal cord muscles, briefly opening the airway for improved breathing. Consider sedation, anesthesia, mild sedation, by use of low-dose propofol, can help reduce laryngospasm sensitivity. Succamethonium administration, if hypoxia persists, consider administering succamethonium to relax muscles and allow intubation. Be prepared for complications, monitor for bradycardia and cardiac arrest due to airway manipulation or medications. Intubation. Wait for the laryngospasm to subside before attempting intubation. We can also use a chest thrust maneuver if needed. Pressure pulmonary edema. Keep the airway clear and monitor for potential pulmonary edema caused by negative pressure. Because of this negative pressure pulmonary edema can lead to fluid accumulation in the lungs, causing severe breathing difficulties and reduced oxygen levels. Lidocaine administration. 
Consider using lidocaine while intubating the patient because this can reduce airway sensitivity during intubation.